The purpose of this presentation is to walk through Heb's XYZ approach to balance sheet closing. With the business plan, there are typically three financial statements that are included. The balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows. The income statement is fairly straightforward and easy to do. The statement of cash flows is just as easy. The balance sheet, the opening balance sheet is pretty easy as well. The most difficult thing that people have trouble with is the closing of the balance sheet. So we'll look through the XYZ approach as well as three examples of that and see if we can't make this a little bit more simplistic. The formula is very simple. X is equal to the total liabilities plus equity. Y is equal to total assets. Since it is a balance sheet, that value must also be equal to X. And Z is equal to Y minus all non-cash assets. Again, the easiest thing to do is to walk through three examples and see if it makes sense. In this opening balance sheet, we see that we have several things. Since it is a balance sheet, all assets are listed in order of liquidity. We have cash and then other current assets. Other current assets would be equal to prepaid expenses, accounts receivable, inventory, supplies, and so on. Fixed assets would be such things as land, equipment, furniture, vehicles. And then there is accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation would be the depreciation of those tangible assets listed under fixed assets. If they were not tangible assets, then amortization would apply as opposed to accumulated depreciation. Beneath the liabilities and equity section, we see we have some debt and capital that's been paid in. Current earnings is zero. Current earnings must always be zero on the opening sheet. There's no income yet, so it must be that value. Distributions can be called dividends or anything else that you want to call them, but since there are no earnings yet, it had always better be zero as well. We're going to assume that this company has a policy of 50% of earnings are paid out as dividends to cover the LLC taxes, since an LLC is a pass-through organization. And you'll see that the numbers that are here are very small. Those numbers can represent dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. It really doesn't matter. We're just using small numbers here to make it very easy to work with. Let's look at some activity that has occurred. In this case, we have net income of 40. That's going to come from the income statement. We also have depreciation occurring of 2. Other assets have increased to 9 units. And lastly, the debt has been paid down by 3 units. Taking those numbers and plugging them into our balance sheet, you'll see that we've made a few changes for period 1. What we do not know is we do not know the values of X, Y, and Z. Retained earnings down in the liabilities equity section is still going to continue to be zero. It needs to be zero. Nothing will go here until we actually close. So everything else is just simply changes to the numbers that we're given. The X portion is easy to figure out just simply by adding together the debt, capital, current earnings, distributions, retained earnings. We find out that X is equal to 31. Since X and Y must always be equal on a balance sheet, y is also equal to 31 and the number can simply be plugged in there. To get the value of z now, we work backwards, we know that the value of cash, other current assets, fixed assets, and accumulated depreciation must be equal to 31, so the value of z then must be equal to 16. Before we stop there, however, let's do a check just to make sure that 16 is indeed the correct number that should be there, and we'll do so by walking through a cash flow. We know we have net income of 40 and depreciation of 2. The balance sheet's change to other was 5. The balance sheet's change to debt was 3. There have been distributions of 20, and there was beginning cash when we started of 2. Adding those values together, we arrive at 16. And indeed, this balance sheet is correct, and we're ready to move on. Let's look at a second example here. The second example, we've just changed the numbers slightly, but no real changes to speak of. What matters is the activities that have occurred during the period. And here we'll assume that activities have been net income of 200, again coming from the income statement, depreciation of 20, other assets have increased to 50 units, and the debt has been paid down by 20 units. We'll take those numbers and plug them into our balance sheet to arrive at period 1. And what we do not know, once again, are the values for X, Y, and Z. X is easily determined by adding together the period 1 column underneath the liabilities and equity, we find out that X is equal to 210. Since it is a balance sheet, once again, X and Y must be equal. We'll plug the value of 210 into Y, and then work backwards from there to determine that Z must be equal to 80. Once again, 
not comfortable just using a plug-in number, let's work through the statement of cash flow and find out that net income is 200, depreciation of 20, balance sheets changed to other was 30, balance sheets changed to debt was 20, distributions of 100, and we had beginning cash in this example of 10, which means that the total value of cash must be 80, which is exactly what we had, and we are indeed in balance. The third example is going to be just slightly different. In the third example, we're going to assume that we have a other assets have decreased in this case from value of two to one, and we'll also have a change in capital from nine to four. So here are our values on our opening sheet. We're going to have net income of 50, depreciation of two, other assets decreasing to just one unit, change in capital from nine to four, and this time let's pay nothing on the debt. Plugging those numbers into the column one, we end up with a balance sheet looking like this. X, Y, and Z are unknown. Adding together the liabilities and equity section, we find that X is equal to 39. Y again must be equal to 39. And working backwards from there, the value for Z then must be equal to 30. Doing a double check, we had net income of 50, depreciation of 2, Balance sheets change to other of one. No longer is this a negative, this is a positive number we're using now. Balance sheets change to debt of five. Distributions of 25. Beginning cash was seven. And thus our total cash is equal to 30. And we see that we have three very simple examples of how to walk through and do the closing balance sheet using the XYZ approach. Hopefully this information was helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you.